I was selected, I was pumped, like super excited. And then also like, well, this is gonna be a big job. It's not just a trip down the road to go climbing or whatever. So a lot of things started whirring through my mind. My grandfather was on the 1956 Trans-Antarctic Expedition, the same expedition crew as Sir Edmund Hillary. And he was there as a doctor and a botanist as well. But I've got all these crazy stories that I've heard from the rest of the family or I've read in his journals. And so that has influenced me massively. That's probably why I'm interested in the outdoors and climbing in the mountains and nature. I think when I was applying, I was definitely thinking about it from a climate change, climate action angle. I do a lot of volunteering for climate action outside of work because this place is somewhere that's so at the front lines of climate change. It would be a really amazing experience to see what that's like and to really try to bring the story of how humans are impacting the natural world around us. We flew for 11 hours to get to Santiago and then three hours to Punta Arenas and then two hours to Stanley in the Falkland Islands and then we're on a boat for like three days until we got to South Georgia and it's just like wow we're a long long way from anywhere. The conditions in South Georgia gets particularly terrible weather it's just exposed in the furious 50s there's nothing at that latitude to stop the wind so we knew that was going to be tough and we also knew that the time of year we were going, there's absolutely no guarantees that you'll get a good weather window. Well, we're just doing a bit of a pre-pack uh, for the trip. Quite a bit's going on, actually. Uh, we've got clothes, we've got sleeping bags, we've got sharps, we've got gas, we've got dehydrated food, we've got clinky bits on the harness. If something went wrong on the climb, if someone got injured or dropped something or anything like that, then there's no one coming to help you. There's not a helicopter that's going to come and rescue you. You're completely on your own. You have to be self-reliant and be able to rescue yourselves and your team. So there was like a lot of pressure to be on the climbing team and to deliver and to be able to look after yourself and have a good shot at getting to the summit. Here I am just feeling the labour off things. A lot of extra weight in there, so I've just pulled them off my bottle. I reckon half a gram there. Beautiful. I'm so excited for our first ocean temperature reading. We've had so many mishaps and you know, I think this is it. This is this is the system. This is science. <laughs> Our job was to go and get recordings of the temperature of the ocean at the surface and at different depths at various locations that we were visiting. So what that would look like is on the trip when we had two excursions a day, morning and afternoon, we would go out on the zodiacs, take the ocean temperature sensor, which was the Mangopare temperature sensor by Met Service, and you put it on the end of a line and put it down into the ocean and it automatically takes measurements at every one metre of depth. Given that I'm a data scientist in my work, I'm really excited to see how we can interpret data around weather and ocean temperatures and things like that in a way that's compelling and insightful and engaging with the general public. Uh, I really love data visualisation and data storytelling. I really wanted to offer those skills in how we talk about observations we make when we're on the island. Once we got to South Georgia, we knew by then that we'd probably be climbing weather conditions allowing in maybe three days' time. So by that point, we had a really good idea of what the weather was going to do and it was not looking good at all. We were still cautiously optimistic because the thing with South Georgia is the weather can change quickly and it can be really unpredictable. So we always were kind of hoping that the forecast would improve. Where the, our mountain is, is an island in the middle of the ocean. There's no helicopter rescue. There's no alpine rescue at all. So all of the qualified people who have the equipment and the skills to do rescue were on the climb. All of us had been like thinking about this climb for probably six months and we'd sunk a lot of time and mental energy and prepared physically and been agonizing over gear and all of that. The day before we were due to climb, we looked at the weather and it was looking so unlikely that we'd go, but we still went through the motions of packing everything. We are ready to go, so we woke up at like five o'clock the next morning, and if the weather was good, then we could have just gone.
We made the call to not attempt Mount Worsley, not get off the ship that day. The main factor was that we would be wet for four days, like straight off the zodiacs, we would be wet, which doesn't lead well to hypothermia. Because of the isolation, we were erring on the side of caution. And what made it worse is the ship just kept sailing down the island and you could just see the mountains and we were just like, oh my God, that's so punishing. Like, what have we done? It would have been amazing to summit Mount Worsley. We would have been the first New Zealand team, the second team in the world. That was the reason why I was on the trip. And then to have that not happen was hard. One moment that really sticks in my mind is when I got to the top of the hill at St Andrews Bay. This is the biggest king penguin colony at South Georgia or and in the world. I'm just watching a um, giant petrel eat a baby king penguin chip. I'm passionate about the environment. I think it's really important because it's like we live in the environment. You know, human beings, we sort of see ourselves as sort of separate from the environment, but at the end of the day, we need water, air and food to survive. If we don't have favourable weather conditions, enough oxygen in the air, clean drinking water and the entire massive web of animals and plant life that sustains that whole system, we're not going to be able to survive. It's tricky because you've travelled literally halfway around the world and you're like, I'm not going to be back here anytime soon, if not ever. Like, it's incredibly hard to get to South Georgia. We know from very recent climate change assessment reports on South Georgia that they are kind of a canary in the coal mine when it comes to climate change. This ecosystem is very fragile and given the richness of biodiversity there, it felt very strange knowing that this island had once been decimated. It was now in full regeneration with all these amazing different species flourishing, but then also knowing what's coming for it and then thinking, you know, is this the start of it that I'm already witnessing? I'm super grateful that I got the chance to go, but then on the other hand, I feel like I've got unfinished business there and I'd like absolutely love to go back.